internet and welcome back to Fantasy Knits, a traveling knitter. This is chapter 19 of my podcast and my name is Steph and I'm coming to you from Dayton, Ohio. It's Sunday, April Fool's Day, also Easter Sunday. Uh, Easter's never been a big thing for my family so to be honest I didn't even realize it was going to be Easter this weekend until I think Friday <laughs> or maybe it was Saturday when people started posting Easter stuff so uh, happy Easter if you celebrate happy April Fool's Day happy Sunday whatever it is I hope you're enjoying your Sunday so far or whenever you happen to watch this uh, so yeah April 1st 2018 and I am six days five five days five, six. This Friday, I will be getting the keys to my new apartment. So I'm pretty excited. Uh, but I haven't gotten a lot of knitting done because let's turn the camera for a second. Oh God. Yes. Do you see that? It's just, it's just a mountain of, of boxes. <laughs> I'll talk about that more so at the end of the episode. And let me, let's just keep my keep my TV out of there. And it looked, my box is right on top of my head. Cool. <laughs> all right. So, um, all of the social media is at the beginning of the episode, but if you would like to follow me, I am Lulu is crazy on Ravelry and on Instagram as well. Side note, Lulu was a nickname, um, from high school. Um, basically, so, <laughs> it's basically like, I have a lot of energy and sometimes I'm a little bit much to handle. Uh, I get very excited excited and loud and so Lulu was like that version of me. Hence Lulu is crazy, not me. You probably didn't care but that's where the name comes from if you ever wonder. Like my name isn't Lulu. <laughs> uh, it's just a it's just an old nickname. So uh, yeah let's Let's just get right into it, right? Um, all my notes are like down there, so I have a completed quest. And where did I, where did I put it? Uh, I thought I brought it over. Um, okay, there it is. So I haven't woven, ugh, my hair. So I haven't woven the ends in, but does this look small, right? This is my antler hat. Let's put it on. So yeah, this one is way smaller than the other one, but I think it's fine. When I block it out, I think it'll, it'll, it'll bloom. And honestly, it doesn't really bother me with how, um, like with the tightness. Cause it's, it's like, it's not that tight. Um, so yeah, that is my, this is my antler hat. So I finished this one, um, last week maybe. And it is out of Barocco Vintage Wool. Is that what this is? Yeah, Wool Vintage in the color 5145, which is essentially a black. And I knit the exact same size as the one I did for my dad, so it's a, a small adult. Uh, but clearly this yarn was thinner than the um the yarn be rustic romantic that i used for my dad's version so it's black you're not gonna really oh, you can kind of see the cable detail if i do this um into the sun or what if does that help maybe i don't know it doesn't really look like it in the viewfinder oh hat hair do you like my attire? That's right. That's a sports bra. I worked out today. <laughs> uh, yeah, actually I tend to work out on Sundays. I don't know. It's just part of my routine. I started an ab workout class. I'll talk about it at the end. But yep, yeah, this is my antler hat. I'm going to do a pom pom and I think I am going to do what I said last time, which is use the gray uh, from my dad's hat to do the pom pom on this guy. I ended up doing the ribbing longer, like I said I was going to. So that worked out great to do this a bit longer. 
Um, I don't really have anything else to say other than I'm probably not going to knit this again anytime soon uh, with doing back two of them back to back. I do have some other yarns that I would like to turn into hats, but I think I'm going to, I'll do something else. So yeah, it's um, Tim Can Knits antler hat, adult, small, longer ribbing, Barocco vintage wool, which is the same as Barocco vintage, I think. Vintage wool and vintage, I think, are the same. I've got my cute little fairy globe light. I, I love this thing. I'm so happy that Walmart had this. And uh, I'm pretty sure this is glass. Really like this. So if anyone's watching, I meant I bought it a couple, like a month ago, or maybe over a month. And uh, I got it at Walmart and it was on the clearance, in the, in the clearance section. So I don't know if they have it anymore, but this was a really good buy and it really does light the room up. And the timer, the timer, it's, it's a significant timer. I think it might be like six, eight hours or something. It's, it's long. That's my only completed quest because yes, Miller's Daughter is still on the needle. I've made significant progress though. So I guess we can talk about that next. Literally, I'm just going to show it to you and that's it. Um, I had mentioned in my last podcast, my goal was to have this done before I moved in. Basically, before I get my keys. I really, really, really want that. So, okay. When I showed it to you last, sorry, I'm in the middle of the row. It's never that easy to show when it's in the middle. I had done, I was on the first repeat of the lace. So basically where my, can you see that donut? Yeah. So like right there and I have completed the lace and I am on the second repeat of the stripes. So honestly, I'm past what the pattern is. The pattern ends with this lace and then the lace, um, is just, there's more repeats because I have where it's it's down there because I have more of the orange I'm doing more stripes and I looked at the pattern again and it does end on a lace so I think I'm going to I'm gonna end on a lace and it'll just be one extra full repeat of lace and stripes so I know if I have leftovers of that orange I'm gonna end up throwing it away or something it's singles I mean I don't I don't think there's I don't think there's enough of this to do maybe for cuffs but it's singles so I don't really want to do uh, anything on socks for that so I just really want to use up as much as possible I, I say that every time but I really do like using up my yarn so that's where I am it's gosh blocking this out is not gonna be super fun uh, but I have um I have my headless, headless, I have my shrunken head. This is actually what I, where I was last, like when I showed it to you on the last podcast, I was like, I'm here. And then I knit all of this. So I just have two progresses. So I will end up, I think I'll move, I'll move my shrunken head to where I am right now. So yeah, it's, it's going. I really want it to be done on my next podcast. It, gosh, I have to, I have to get that done. So that is, like I say, every episode, The Miller's Daughter by Melanie Berg. It is a three color shawl, but I'm only using two colors. Now my next quest is also something I've shown before. And it is my Knit Picks Felici stripey socks, vanilla, and I'm almost done. So I just have to kitchener the toe here and then put the heel in. I'm gonna do a cut in heel. And so I believe this is where it was the last time I showed you, right here. And no. And then I have done all of this on the second one. So I have to knit basically uh, 
two more stripes. So there, there they are. I've already started this color right here, um, but I've only done one round. So I've got two stripes and then the sock. The, the, the whole thing's a sock. Two more stripes and then the toe. And then I will do the cut and heels for both of them. So I'm gonna, you know, get this one and then Kitchener them at the same time and cut in the toes at the same time is my goal. So yeah, I'm actually pretty excited, pretty happy about these. And Candace of the Pin Feathers and Pearls podcast is doing her stripey socks cow. And I'm gonna I'm gonna cast on another pair of socks for that. Now, I guess I didn't really put this on my in the horizon section. I have I'm I'm kind of thinking I want to do a commercial yarn for it and I'm th I've got this is not all of them but I have these like Americana ones which do some striping and then I don't know if these do striping so I don't want to cast those on if they don't Actually, someone in my knitting group is knitting these exact same ones right here, and I know those stripe. And I'm I'm thinking maybe I will do these ones, the Patton's Croy that are down here. They're brown, blue. Is there a picture? I don't see one. I think they stripe. Or this opal one, which the opal one stripes too. So maybe I'll do this opal one instead. Um, it's on top. It's Opal Cotton Premium. And it's 100 grams, 38% wool, 32% polyamide, and 30% cotton. 60. Okay. Just making sure the math was correct. <laughs> yes, that's 100%. Success. And the colorway is... Okay, it says Cotton Premium 2015 Coral, potentially, K-O-R-A-L-L-E, -L -L -E. that might be Coral in German, uh, but the color number is 8892. So yeah, I, I make decisions just filming. So yeah, these are gonna be my stripey socks. Yeah, excited. They don't look like they're gonna stripe, but the picture says they will, and so does the, the writing, so bam. I'll have to pick what am I gonna do as, am I gonna do heels, toes, and cuffs? Maybe, we'll see. So yes, that's what I'm gonna put in for my stripe, for the stripey socks, gal. Split decision, done. Uh, yeah, so those two things are my only current works in progress that are active. Um, I'm ready to get them off the needle, really ready for that shawl to get off so that I can cast on the next shawl, which I've talked about both ones that I want to make um, in previous episodes. So the, oh gosh, I'm, the name has just flown out. Let's, I have it written down. The Tokerau shawl by Francois Denoy. Francois Denoy, hopefully that's correct. In um, a, wool, a wool field color that's green. I ha it's sitting over there and then a knit picks in brown. So that's one that I'm wanting to make. And then another one, which I talked about way earlier, is the Half Moon Oracle Shawl. And it's going to be in the Inner Circle Yarn Club Blitzed in Anren, or Amren, which was um, from her Inner Circle Yarn Club, which I, really, really liked. I hope she does this again. And then I had put together, uh, is this eggplant? Yeah, eggplant Malabrigo. And this is a purple. And the, I wanted a gray with it. So I went and I bought a, several grays. And this is bringing me into Smaug's Trove. Yeah. Well, this is, We'll jump back and forth between Smaug's Trove and On the Horizon. But uh, I bought this Bad Amy Knits and it's her hand dyed merino sock yarn 8020 in charcoal. So it's a 80 superwash merino, 20% nylon, about 400 yards. And this is it. This is gonna be it. 
So the two, gosh, the two outside ones, the purple and the gray, they are, um, there, there's no Stellina, but the Amren one from Bull and Vine has Stellina in it and it's gold steel. It is gold Stellina. So I, I think these are going to look great. And the purple and the gray look really nice together as well. Um, there isn't nearly as, like, it is not that dark. On camera, it's picking up very dark. Yeah, not helping. Do I put it by the light? Eh, still really dark. So that's going to be my in a uh, half moon oracle shawl. Excited for that. Also on the horizon, uh, gosh, I didn't even bring it over. I'll talk about that later. Is the hitchhiker shawl by Martina Bem? Is that what I wrote? It's, hopefully, I'll have it on the screen, uh, but it's by Martina, a very popular pattern. And my knitting group is, is doing a knit along, and that is the pattern that was chosen. So I purchased some yarn for it. And again, it is Bad Amy Knits. This time it's in her hand-dyed merino single. A single ply fingering weight in the asparagus colorway, and it's about 434 yards. I... This is, I love it. I love it, love it, love it. So it's one of those greens. It's got like that bright chartreuse color dyed, I don't know if it's dyed over black, but it's, there's black in here. Let's see if I can, if I get it. Bad Amy Knits in her asparagus colorway. I'm super excited for this. So the Hitchhiker shawl is, um, it's a one skein shawl and it's got little spikes or however much yarn you have has however many spikes you do. I, my plan is if I don't like the length that I'm getting, like if, you know, if this, if I'm about to run out of yarn and it's just a little too short, I'm going to stripe in some black. I have some black. Well, it's like gray, but I know I can get some black single ply yarn. Um, and that's my plan if it ends up being too short. My last on the horizon quest is a bit unique. And give me a second, I'm going to go grab them. The Funky Cal is a knit along hosted by Celine of the Basic Stitch Knitting podcast. And she's based out of Hong Kong. And I recently discovered her... Maybe a couple, I think it was in January. I was kind of going through and wanting to find some newer pod, well, not necessarily newer, but less, less known podcasts. She's a lesser known podcaster, um, more known than I am, but still um, in that sort of realm. And I just really enjoyed watching her, her podcast and her episodes just because I find that she has a very unique perspective to the fiber environment, the fiber <laughs> culture, the whatever. She has a unique perspective because of where she lives. Um, I've never been to Hong Kong, but it's, well, actually I have. I've been to the Hong Kong airport. I was there for four hours uh, from eight till midnight. <laughs> And then on the way back, I was there again, I think for a couple hours at night. So I really didn't get to see Hong Kong at all, but I would love to go visit. And I just find it refreshing and different to see uh, someone from a different place. Uh, there's, you know, we have a lot of podcasters in the United States. There's a lot of podcasters in Europe. Um, there's a couple in Australia. Or I'm sure there's more, but... I don't know of too many in, 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 in Asia, and maybe I'm just not looking, or I'm not able to find them, but I just really enjoy that. Um, she has two cows going on. I don't think there's any end dates or anything. They're very open, um, and one is the funky cow, and it is knit with a funky yarn or a yarn you just don't know what to do with. Well, let me tell you, I have a lot of those because I started knitting 
when I was in middle school. And as a middle schooler, I was using my allowance to buy yarn and I got $20 a month. Nowadays, $20 doesn't even get me a skein of yarn. So I was, you know, I was working with what I had. So I would buy acrylic. There's nothing wrong with acrylic. It's very affordable, durable, and you know, a lot of people don't want to deal with the fuss of hand knit yarns, fancier yarns. So I have a lot of acrylic yarn. And I'm not a hoarder per se, but I definitely, when I look at something, I see dollars. Like I'm like, oh yes, I spent $5 on this, I spent $3 on this. So I have a very hard time just giving it away or letting go. So what I thought when she said the funky cow, I was like, oh my gosh, this is perfect. I can enter the cow with whatever I've made from my random yarn. And to make it even more fun, I put it into this bag. Now this is not all of my funky yarns. This is just several skeins that were at the top that I decided to put in here. And this is my Backyard Fiberworks bag that I got at Stitches Midwest last year when I purchased, I, like, I think I purchased three skeins of yarn. So I got this bag, which was awesome, and I've been putting pins on it. And I, yes, we can go through these pins right now. So I've got the Dark Mark. I have a Hogwarts Crest, so it's like the wax stamp. I have a sheep from Foster Sheep Farms, which was um, a button that I got, I wanna say I got it at Rhinebeck. And then I love this dude. This is Super Sloth. I will rescue you at my own pace. Love him. This one and the, well actually the big ones are all from the same designer on Etsy. It's Abby something. I'll post the information below because I've made two purchases from her and I really like her things. And then of course I've got Destination Yarns right here. This is what I, I bought Athens Bricks and then I bought my mom a full set of um, full skeins of the Midwest, like Ohio one. And then I've got Beauty is Found Within, Beauty and the Beast pin. And then this guy, this is, this, I love him. You're a lizard, Harry. So it's, it's a lizard. Uh, he's got a little scar and glasses, love him. This one is from Lemonade Shop, one of the very first indie dyers that I ever purchased from. Then this one is the Indifferent Iguana. I wish I cared. I've got a picture of Hogwarts. I have a flute because I used to play flute. Uh, my mom got me this for Christmas. And then I have Baymax holding an umbrella over a kitty. I really like Baymax. If you haven't watched Big Hero 6, I highly recommend you do. It's really good, really good. All right, so what's in here? My funky yarn. And the reason why I put it in here my nose keeps itching. So the reason why I put it in here was I'm, I'm going to turn this into a game. I figured I don't really want to knit with this yarn. So how about I make it a surprise? So my plan is to stick my hand in, pick out a yarn, and make something with it. Now this one's actually not too bad. Um, this one came in a mystery skein grab thing at Michael's because it was super tangled and I, I talked about it in like a very early very early video where the grab bags are sometimes not worth it if you have to spend hours uh untangling it and I'm pretty sure this is like boot, red heart boutique or something um I'm probably gonna just do a shawl with this one so I have plans with some of them like I know when I pick it out what I'm gonna do with it but others, no clue. So I was kind of thinking I might do some stuffies, some animals and things. But I also have some end bits. So this is right here. I'm not going to go through all these. But this is an alpaca yarn that I got when I went to Germany. It was before, it was the summer before going into sixth grade. Or it was the summer of sixth grade. Gosh. It was either before or after sixth grade. And I had bought this yarn and I loved it and I didn't have enough so my opa had to go buy another one for me and this is the leftover so 
I have that scarf still. Um, it's very skinny and but it just it just it was the very first time I used expensive yarn. Um, I don't remember how much this was but I could my mom bought it for me. I couldn't afford it so uh, but I do remember it was alpaca which looking at it I wouldn't think it's alpaca. I would think that this is acrylic Chanel but I remember this saying like I bought this because it had alpaca in it. So yeah this guy like this will maybe be a stuffier. So that's my plan for the funky cow is just to stick my hand in here and grab a skein of yarn and go with it. I like that concept. All right, so uh, the last, well, the last knitting kind of section is Smaug's Trove. And I've already shown you the uh, Bad Amy Knits yarn, uh, which I purchased. But I'm in, yeah, so where did I get all this? Because clearly I'm supposed to be using my uh, stickers. Well, last week, my knitting group went up to Bowling Green for a fiber festival and it's like when you go to the bar and you break the seal and then you just keep going to the bathroom. That's what it was like. I didn't buy yarn for probably the first 20 minutes. Uh, we had gone through most of this or like half of it and then I, I bought one skein and it was like game over. Buy everything you want. Buy two sweaters quantity. I'm not gonna go through everything, um, just because. So I showed you the bad Amy knits. Um, what else I, I mentioned I was buying gray yarn. So I also purchased this Annie yarn and it says look for the braided skeins. She's got uh, this cute little bird on her tag. And this is in tarnished silver, that's the colorway. It's Destiny Sock, which is 801010 Merino Cashmere Nylon. And it's 100 grams, 398 yards. And uh, so this was the other gray that I was looking at. And I decided it was just a little bit too... Come on, focus. It was just a little bit too light. So I got that one in because I didn't bring... I didn't bring my yarn to compare what I wanted. So I was just kind of like gray, gray, gray. And then I received my last installment of the Homespun House Harry Potter Yarn and Charm Club. So this one came very quickly and it's because they just stuck it in my mailbox, which was very much appreciated. And as I was opening it, so like I'm looking, I'm, I'm, I've got the package and I'm just like, please be something gray, please be something gray, please be something gray, because I was just really feeling gray. And look away if you haven't received yours. It's gray! So I was super excited that it ended up being gray. This is Sirius's Gift, uh, the sock, Soft Sock Merino, which is 7525, 425 meters or 470 yards. And I uh, love it. I'm not gonna describe the colors just in case you haven't received yours and yours and you're looking away. But, ugh. And the charm. This, this is probably my favorite, this is probably my favorite charm I've received. It's an owl. Okay, it's not gonna focus, but it's a little owl and I love, I don't know if it's supposed to be like that, but if you set him flat, his head is cocked to the side. I don't know if that was intentional or if that's just how mine came, but I, I love that. I love that he's like, turned into the side. Ugh. I have to say, and I think I've said it before, I prefer my charms to be things rather than food. A lot of these clay charm makers, they do little like foodie things that are themed. I just, I prefer it when it's like a little owl or a shrunken head <laughs> or a pygmy puff. I definitely, I like that. I like the food too, but I like these better. So really excited for that. I don't know what I'm gonna make with it, which is just like with everything, but mm, super happy. And that closes Smaug's Trove for now. I'm probably not gonna show the other yarns until I knit some more. I'm gonna pretend they don't exist. 
And this brings me to the last segment, which is called a novel idea. And where did I put my phone? So I've been reading a ton, a ton of books. I, whoo, I'm at, I've read 37 books so far this year. Yeah, my goal is to read 100 and I finished up my reading challenge with my friends. I didn't win. <laughs> I was, um, I took second by, it was literally like 90 pages. We were very close. If last week I had that yarn festival that I went to and then the Sunday I actually had a migraine so I literally did not read those two days. If I had read, I would have won. But whatever. I had a ton of fun anyway and um, it doesn't make me want to stop reading. I love it. So for Smout, Smog strobe. So for a novel idea, I wanted to throw it back. And I hope I haven't talked about this book series on here before. This is why I've been keeping notes so that I don't talk about books multiple times and make the same suggestion. The book that I want to talk about, it's more so a realm uh, or an author, we could say. And that's Tamora Pierce or Tamara Pierce. I'm not exactly sure how she pronounces her name. I grew up saying Tamora because my neighbor is who introduced me to the author and she pronounced it as Tamora. And the first book in her series is this one. And I pulled up like the, the 80s cover and it's Alana, The First Adventure. So this book is a fantasy book. Oh, I don't know I was there. So it's a fantasy book. There are quartets. She writes in quartet groups or that's what these are. And Alana is the first and the series is, it's fantasy so there's magical elements. Alana has a twin um, and their father wants the twin to go off to be a knight and Alana to be a mage I believe. But Alana is like, ugh, no thank you. I want to be a knight. So they trade places because they're twins. They're identical twins. And um, the story goes off from there. So she's, you know, hiding her identity. She's, you know, hiding that she's a girl and she kind of comes of age. And what was, I think what's unique about the novels and that's, this isn't me, like it's not unique of me to say this. I think this is um, a known thing about these is these books I think are a, a feminist style of fantasy. Uh, so the main character as a woman, she becomes a woman. She gets her period. She deals with um, bullying and things like that. And it's, I loved this series when I was little and I reread it and I enjoyed it again. And I only reread the Alana series. I didn't um, reread all of them, but that's on my to-do list because to my, Tamora Pierce came out with a new book in a new series and it's from the second quartet. So there's Alana, then Varela Dane, and then Kelladry. And so Alana, she's got four books. Varela Dane has, she's got eight books, I think. And then Kelladry has four books. And in that order, because um, it's of age, so. Kelladry is young when Alana is older so it kind of goes it flows and then you've got Alana's daughter has a duology and then there's another series set in the same realm um quartets as well about three girls and a guy um learning their magical abilities and things so I highly recommend all of them now the, you know, Alana, the first, the, the one that I'm talking about, it came out in the 80s, right? So it's, gosh, I mean, it's 30 years old at this point, maybe even older. I'm not sure when in the 80s it came out. And it's for kids. So um, at least I read them when I was in middle school. So, you know, keep that in mind when you read books, right? Like there's not a ton of detail. Uh, because it's got a younger audience. But if you're, at least for me, I'm like, if I'm feeling nostalgic, I'll pick it up. But I really, really recommend any of her books. I like to start from the beginning. 
so I would start with the Alana series first unless you want to start with the circle reforged or the circle opens it, that's the one with the three girls and the guy um, they follow a, a very separate storyline so you could start with those instead but Tamora Pierce, Tamara Pierce, I highly recommend her and that is my suggestion for a novel idea. All right, so random rambles at the end. What have I been doing? Well, I showed you all the boxes, right? So I've been packing and I've been doing a lot of reading. I've been, I worked out today, hence my sports bra and look at my shirt. Let's try not to show you my pants because those are my workout short shorts. <laughs> so this is my Pierce the Veil tank top. I, I love tank tops. Like if I could just live in tank tops, I would. But I don't live in a warm enough climate to just live in tank tops. So this is my Pierce the Veil shirt. I love this tank top and I got it at Warp Tour. And uh, I don't know if this is like, whatever. I... I loved going to Warp Tour and this summer is the last year of Warp Tour. So I bought tickets! So my friend and I were gonna go to the Chicago Warp Tour. I've never been to Chicago Warp Tour. I've been to Cincinnati and Cleveland Warp Tours, um, you know, cause they're, they're the closest. So I've been to those, but never outside of Ohio. So I'm pretty excited to go to the Chicago one. I feel like maybe it'll be bigger. Uh, because it's on a weekend. The ones in Ohio are always on the weekday. They're not big enough crowds to, to host on the weekend. So I'm pretty excited for that. I'm going to feel very nostalgic and I'm going to feel old. Uh, um, there's, that's the thing about going to these, the like warp tour. I feel like it has this like kid, kid connotation or kid vibe to it. Um, cause the last time I went and I was like, Oh, they're like 15, which that's fine. But I'm, I'm almost double your age. <laughs> uh, and I also tend to not drink during those because it's just so hot, so hot, so sweaty. I'm jumping up and down, you know, losing millions of calories. Um, so I, I tend to not drink during them. Um, but I'm super excited to do that. Very excited for my nostalgic concert. Um, I'm also going to Germany uh, the first two weeks of July. So that's my plan. And I, I want to hop over to Paris as well. I think that's where I'm going to go somewhere else just to like do something other than just Germany. So those are my plans there. Um, work related, I'm doing, I think two emergency trips. So, um, I'll be going to Indianapolis. I mean, been there many times, so nothing new there. And then I, sh I'm also going to Canada, I think Toronto. That one I'm not 100% sure of yet. It just was like asked and I said yes. So I've got two places to go. I'll go to two different yarn shops because I'm gonna, I'm gonna continue my, my, my thing from what I used to do in the be what I used to do, which was go to a different yarn shop for every, every install that I was on. Um, because what I do every week is an install. So that's that. Um, yeah. The workout that I just started is an ab workout. Um, if you like workout classes and things like that, I'm definitely more motivated to do a class and to, to stay regular with things like that. Um, but there is a, a husband and wife duo that their brand is called Fitness Blender. I'll leave the link below. I highly recommend them. So Fitness Blender, they have hundreds of free videos in their search feature you say like how long do you want it to be what do you want to target what difficulties um do you have any equipment do you want to do like hit which is high intensity high intensity interval training do you want to do pilates so it's uh, it's really cool in that in that aspect but like i said they're all free now you can pay for plans, which is what I did. I paid for a, a four week ab, a four week ab program. And what it does is it sets up the calendar for you and it tells you which classes you're going to take. So they're, the classes are all free, but it organizes which ones you should take on which day. Also gives you um, like tips, tricks, I don't know if tricks would be one, but you know, tips, 
uh, and then some like meal planning and things like that. Uh, so the, and it's only $10 and you get to have it forever, um, that like program. So then if you want to do it again, you just say start date and it'll fill out your calendar for you. And the paying for those programs is what helps keeps the uh, videos free. So um, I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. I definitely want to, you know, work on, work on the belly situation. So yeah, Fitness Blender, if you're into working out, if you want to work out, or if you don't know what to do, you don't want to pay for a gym membership, I used Fitness Blender in my hotel. So I would just click no, um, no weights, no nothing. Like I don't have any, literally all I have is this phone book. Um, and it was great. And yeah, and it tells you, you know, how much time and if both, um, if both people are doing the, the workout, then one of them will do the lower impact version. So you could do the high impact version or the lower impact version. So that's rather, ra rather random, but, uh, yeah, I hope you enjoyed the podcast. If you have any questions, like to get in touch with me, um, message me on any of the social medias that I talked about, Lulu's Crazy on Instagram and Ravelry, um, or just comment below and I should see it. Otherwise, I will talk to you guys later. Bye!